the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for the sick and handicapped recently departed in the military personnel of our community. Roll call. Mr. Henderson? Here. Mr. Petroselli? Here. Mr. Gallarducci? Here. Mr. Colosimo? Here. Mr. Raducci? Here. Mrs. Schneider? Here. Mr. Shashelsky? Here. Mayor Copeland? Here. Solicitor McDermott? Here. Engineer Kovac? Here. I'm Joe Power. Chief King? He's absent. Chief Castain? Present. Director Miller? Here. Thank you. Uh, for the record, this is being shown on Zoom tonight as well. Right? This is our first effort of having live back in the council chambers and uh, trying to reach the rest of the community who wants to by Zoom. As I understand it, there's nobody in the meeting that has signed up to speak, right? It's in, uh, yeah, I'm in the Zoom. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, no. Okay, uh, visitors, uh, Bob Pryor, please state your name and your address. Yes. Hi, uh, Bob Pryor and the 508 Hunter's Path, original and section in South Did you know, uh, I'm uh, very interested in seeing that the comprehensive plan is uh, expansive enough to solve Woodsville's uh, traffic congestion problem. And the way I'll, I'll explain this drawing to you in, in a second. But in addition to the, uh, I don't know if you've had the time to read some of the stuff I've been sending you, especially the stuff that I got off Data USA about the condition, uh, the situation in Bridgeville for its residents compared to other communities. We have a lot of work to do, but if a comprehensive plan, in my opinion, is done aggressively and to totally solve our traffic and uh, parking problems, I think Bridgeville will be able to compete with the other uh, business districts in the San Marco area. But I want to show you something that uh, it might be a new idea to you. These, excuse me, this center black line, that's Washington Avenue, and as you know, uh, the two-way couple has been recommended to, to us several times with different people. And also, this area right down here, that's the Baldwin Street uh, area that's been flooded, as and I mentioned to you before, uh, based on the five bridges that the creek has to go under. And it seems that the commercial street called us the problem. Uh, making that, I think, I think uh, and your firm suggested a possibility of making Baldwin Street uh, a two-way street. But anyway, I'm, I'm suggesting, as, as you know, that the Baldwin Street, Barker Road, couple for 400 yards be made, two one-way streets in both directions. But I wanted to show you something else. This is, uh, this is Presley Road at the top of the hill, and this is the Charlotte, uh, I forget the name of the whiskey in <laughs> Chess Street. Originally, I got a copy of a document from uh, 1901. And originally, uh, Chess Street followed this whole pattern. And at the bottom, the bottom, the bottom of the steep hill, uh, which we've all driven down in Chess Street, the street was actually, it actually crossed the railroad tracks by going straight ahead. And in the comprehensive plan, since it's a theoretical uh, hope that, that that's what we can achieve with the plan, uh, I would suggest that you go back to that original plan and, and you might get the money to create the second crossing of, uh, uh, to Chester. The reason that's important is if this is, this is a good shortcut in individuals' uh, traffic congestion. <coughs> and by increasing the number of people that use that Chester route, They'll be able to take left turns into the central business district on Hickman Street and also on Station Street. The other thing I was going to show you is uh, I described to you the red arrows. The orange arrows are 
equally interesting. Probably 15 years ago, I happened to run into a PennDOT official in front of the Holy Child Church on Station Street. And I, as I usually do, I uh, asked him what he was doing. He was considering extending Station Street, which is essentially an extension of maybe a road. He was considering extending Station Street across the railroad tracks and to merge with the uh, North Bond Lane on I-79. That's something else. That's another uh, concept that I think should be included in the comprehensive plan. At any rate, I'm, if, if we can, by solving the traffic problem, you're going to double the number of consumer motorists that you can drive in and out of this community. That means you're going to double the, the profits of the businesses here. And I'm quite sure the, uh, the new retail businesses and stores will be waiting in line to get in here if we completely solve the job. Yeah, let me share this with you, Bob. In addition to the comprehensive plan, we have an active transportation plan that's working jointly with that comprehensive plan. So we're looking at that individually as well as a comprehensive plan. We have... Uh, Who's work, working on that? Well, we haven't hired a firm yet, but we've got, oh. uh, we have bids out, and um, you know, we're, we're going to interview the firm, uh, or several firms, uh, this, week. Yeah, this week. That's wonderful. Um, so we're looking at, at all the things you're talking about. But they have confidence. None of the, uh, the original business is the same Of course, the area is large, it's the shopping centers and coffee. Or, uh, but we can profitably compete with those uh, businesses, as your city planners will be telling you, by having a balanced uh, set of stores. And as I, as I don't know if you've got the stuff I'm sending you, both. Uh, Many of the uh, city planners who have given us, given you advice over the years, in addition to recommending the solution to the traffic problem and providing enough parking, they also recommending, recommended building some high rise condominiums within walking distance to the business districts. And those are people that want to hop in their cars and go to the shops. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks, Bob. I, I had something about you. Know, you can give us something. Okay, thanks. Uh, that's all we have for you. Uh, before we get into the regular meeting, I, uh, I just want to make a comment about uh, a rain event last night and some of our observations. Um, you know, as, you, as everybody here knows, uh, flood mitigation has been uh, heavy on our minds and, and a lot of work has been put into it from prior council and this council. And uh, last night we got a little bit of a test. We had about an inch of rain in about an hour. And uh, when it rains like that, every one of us run to a part of the creek and, you know, you just hope and pray that what we're doing is working. And last night, I'll tell you, the, our observations were very positive. Very positive. Uh, the trash rack, you know, caught a lot of debris. And some got through, but a lot of it was caught. Uh, the, the ball field that we lowered filled up, uh, but dissipated rapidly within 45 minutes, you know, after the, uh, the onslaught of the rain. Um, one of the most, you know, for me, one of the best signs was I was leaving Bridgeville going towards Collier and looked over at the back channel and the water was flowing there where it hadn't flowed before. And, and, and that's a tribute to the Public Works Department that took out that island of dirt. Um, none of us up here believe we're going to solve flooding. We're not. We just we can't promise that. But I think the steps that prior council has taken and what we're, what we're acting on, uh, we're seeing positive results. So we're optimistic that uh, we continue to work on, on flooding, that we can reduce the events that occur. So please, do, please do report that. Excuse me, how big was the degree that got past the degree screen? It wasn't big that big. Well, I didn't see anything tremendously large. Um, you know, when a rack starts catching, you know, stuff, stuff. It, it's going to catch small stuff in it, and that starts to build up. Yeah. Um, I can tell you public works, and I don't want to steal their thunder, uh, but today they you know, removed some debris from the culvert, uh, from a couple of other areas in, in, the, uh, in the borough. Uh, we're working on getting a better access to the trash rack to get that out this week. Um, That's curious. And we'll, we'll get a good, good idea of what you know, got through and maybe downstream. <laughs> Water looked clean to me that was flowing, so that's good. That's a good sign. Okay, regular business.
I need a motion to approve the May 10th, 2021 regular meeting minutes as submitted. I second it. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to approve the June 2021 bill list. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to approve the June 18th, 25th, July 2nd, and 9th, and 2021 payrolls. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to adopt ordinance number 1021, an ordinance of Borough of Ridgeville amending its code of ordinances, chapter 13, licenses, permits, and general business regulations, part two, transient retail merchants, subsection 205.E, prohibited acts, and part three, solicitation of contributions, subsection 303.G, conditions under which a permit is issued to establish updated rules regarding permissible and prohibited days and hours during which one may or may not engage lawful door-to-door -door solicitation or other covered activities as recommended by the public safety committee. So yes. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I need a motion to adopt resolution number 2021-14, a resolution of the borough of Bridgeville establishing fees for the filing of applications, permits, and licenses for the borough. Note that the changes are one, creation of park shelter rental fees for McLaughlin Run Park shelters two and three at $35 for residents and $100 for non-residents. And two, increases transient retail solicitation permit fees to $25 per day, $100 per week, $350 per month. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? We need a motion to adopt resolution number 2021-17 Resolution of the Borough of Ridgeville authorizing the submission of the sewage facilities planning module for commercial street properties plan, lot subdivision to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection for its approval as a revision to the official sewage facilities plan of the Borough of Ridgeville. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to authorize a disbursement of $32,857.87 from the capital fund or capital project fund to Brentsville Excavation in LLC for partial payment number one for the Janeway Stream Bank Stabilization Project. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to authorize the execution of change order number five for the McLaughlin Run Park Improvements Project a ski ready site development and paving company that adjusts quantities for bid item number 25 to reflect in place quantities and remove bid items number 19, 20, 21, and 22 from the contract in accordance with Article 10 of the contract documents, resulting in a net decrease of $68,993.70. So moved. Second. Opposed. Just all in favor. Opposed. Motion carries. Got ahead of us. Need a motion to authorize the execution of change order number one for the 2021 Roadway Improvement Program with Youngblood Paving Incorporated to adjust the contract amount to include at alternate number three, McLaughlin Run Park parking lot, paving as part of the 2021 Roadway Improvement Project as bid, and with an increase of $67,416.25. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. I'd just like to make a note that I appreciate Youngblood stepping up when uh, unfortunately we had uh, uh, some of the items uh, kind of passed or not moved forward on. Uh, the Youngblood really helped us out on making sure that we stayed under budget and stayed uh, within that pro project's uh, goals. Thanks, Joe. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to authorize the execution of change order number two for the 2021 Roadway Improvement Program with Youngblood, <coughs> Youngblood Paving Incorporated to include additional paving work along Byronville Road as part of the 2021 Roadway Improvement Project at a cost of $33,249.60 to be paid from the liquid fuels fund. I'll make that motion, but uh, if you permit me, 
to make a, a remark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It took me a long time when uh, Joe called me, the manager called me about this job. We know what Barrier Road has been doing. It's Barrier Road is very expensive for the taxpayer. Something, this is the last time, of course, the six or more, that I will agree on any money spent for that. Bob mentioned. 1901. I did a lot of research in 1901. How we got that road, believe me, I could talk to you guys for hours. Upper St. Clair owned a lot of bridgeville at that time. Somehow we incorporated part of the road as well. I believe that good research should be done. In my experience, be born in a mountain, Montevideo. I don't think we have a water problem on Barrier Road. To me, to do Barrier Road, to not be preaching with the engineer for the last uh, 37 years, you need to reconstruct that from the very bottom. Now, I like the young uh, contractor going a little deeper. Okay, let's see whatever. But if this don't work, I advise you guys to put it Close that street on one side, put a berry there, cement, and forget about it. Let the big boys see what we got to do with this. Let the federal, let the county, let the state come in. That's the only thing I recommend. Uh, this is too much money for the taxpayer. In a couple of years, we're going to have a million dollars. Come on. It's ridiculous. No engineer can come up with the solution. And I still say there's no more than that. Those days when they did that, you know, people throw everything, mattress, furniture, and everything. So those things, they, they, they're not stable. But there, there has to be some good, good thought about barrier road. That stretch from the J to uh, it's, it's, we spend too much money, Mr. Chairman, on their own. Something got to be done. Well, I, I appreciate your comments. I would, I would say the condition of the road requires some repair right now. And this is relatively, no question. relatively inexpensive, and it's coming from our liquid fuels fund. I appreciate your comments, and, and you know, it's something that uh, should occur again, we, we probably do need to look deeper into it. For now, I, um, I'll second. I hate motion. We have a second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. I need a motion to accept and pay any commission due May 2021 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to acknowledge receipt of the April 2021 treasury report. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I need a motion to accept the May 2021 police report. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the committee reports. Uh, administration. Oh, sorry. What's it? Oh. Okay, I thought we were going to do business. I need, we have one more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I need one more motion. Uh, I need to make a motion to uh, make a partial payment number one to Young Blood Paving for completion of the 2021 Roadway Improvement Program in the amount of $226,532.60. That's the completion of our annual work program. I shall move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Um, I don't have a whole lot. Um, I do want to mention that the borough recently um, achieved a silver score on the completion of the Sustainable Pittsburgh Community Sustainable Assessment, um, which will help with assist um, the borough with future grant requests to the state. So thank you, borough administration, for all that work. And in addition to that, uh, we recently uh, received the State Light Removal Grant um, Award for the demolition of the four condemned um, residential properties that have been identified um, over the last several months. So 
That's great. And then um, uh, we do have the new resident packets that continue to be sent out to all the new residents, and, as well as the updated, um, ongoing um, report from the borough about the recent updates get sent out into the uh, student bills. Um, so a lot of good information in there, as well as the website. I just want to encourage uh, residents to check out the website for ongoing updates for the community activities. Uh, namely that there is a yoga class in Chartier's Park every Saturday at 8.30. It's great. Um, it's, it's had a great attendance, so, and look forward to more things happening in the community. So check out the website. Thank you. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Pardon? Get the bring your own mat. You do. But you can bring a towel if you don't have one. Just do it on the, no, I'm on the grass. <laughs> I'll put you on the pants. Get, get close to nature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finance. Go over to Thank you, Bill. Uh, let's see. The safety committee met uh, again and uh, for to attend a training class on the twentieth. Uh, they're on track with the committee to work on that uh, two thousand twenty-two insurance discount. So, uh, great job uh, putting that committee together, as well as uh, the volunteers that were uh, included in that uh, committee. Uh, we did have one insurance claim. We had two workers uh, that were in an incident on June 4th uh, that had to do with the fallen tree on Higher Hill. They were only minor energy injuries. Uh, one officer received two stitches, but the best part was there was no loss of work. So uh, good to hear there. Uh, last but not least, uh, the American Rescue Plan funding. Uh, we have received notification that the first half of that funding uh, is needs to be applied uh, ASAP. I, uh, as uh, most of the council knows, I work with uh, a lot of municipalities and have a lot of contacts with finance directors. And one finance director always sends me information that we try to share. And uh, she had sent me something. Hey, you need to get this plan number. You need to get this number. You need to make sure your borough is assigned this. I called Joe. It was all done already. So uh, kudos to him. He's really doing a fine job there, my friend. Um, this uh, first uh, drawdown is a little over 250000 And to my knowledge, and help me, Joe, this is going to, towards uh, our sewer programs. Storm uh, sewer. Storm, storm sewer work, right. So uh, that also helps us in regards to a lot of the capital improvements that we've been wanting to do, and we're, we're moving forward in doing so. Uh, great job to uh, everybody there, and uh, again, great job on being on top of all that uh, stuff. Uh, I did hear from a couple <coughs> municipalities that they're behind the eight mile, a lot of the things that, that uh, Joe was very proactive. So again, Joe, thank you so much for what you did. Uh, I think that's all I have for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Joe with Thank you, Bill. Uh, uh, Brian, just like to thank the Public Works Department for the parks are really looking good right now. Um, on Donna McLaughlin Park, there was a note that uh, the fees for two of the new shelters are like going to be 35 bucks, I believe it is. The reason being there's no electrical power in those two new shelters. So if you don't need lights, a good, good parking price, good place to go. Uh, our committee met this or in the last week actually regarding start of work done in Chartier's Park. Uh, we want to get the world on this project. So I have a motion. I would like to have authorized the advertisement and placement of bids for improvements of Chartier's Park that will repair the stream bank, complete the grading work necessary for the new playground equipment to be constructed adjacent to shelter number one. That's down under like a grove of trees down there. There's a real small set of playground equipment down there. The thing we've chosen will really look nice. And in addition to that, <clears throat> we've, uh, the engineer and Joe have gone to uh, the CoStar program, which is sort of like the cog in that they do group purchasing and whatnot like that. And we've decided that we would like to get a playground unit for that apartment. It's very nice. You know, in a nicer community, you can see units pretty much like this one, large towers, slides. Uh, 
big set and it is right there as you can see. Uh, we're not sure, quite sure about the color of it yet, but uh, that's what we'd like to get done. Now the price of this thing is $215,000. So I thought that's what this stuff goes for. I taught the devil that the back of her days it cost $300 to get a seat for a swing. So I mean, this stuff's expensive. Uh, but that does include the safety pad. We'll have that rubberized safety pad down there. <clears throat> and um, I think it'll be great for the park, great for the kids, for the community. So if I could, I'd request a second to my motion on that. I second that. All in favor? Um, Aye. Okay. Okay. Opposed? I just wanted to add that it's all ADA compliant, right. so we're disabled. So I have That's okay. Motion here. Nice. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Our stars will be good. A chance to go through uh, the pocket yesterday, <coughs> get up to the water. The shelters are beautiful. Are we, uh, I'm assuming we're going to put power in those at some point? Yeah, down the road, you know. It's, it's down the road a little bit, but yeah, it kind of uh, Public Works, you know. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Rector, you had the reports here. Right now, we're busy uh, cutting grasses and so forth. Where I really like it, with Joe, our manager, you and I, you have a, the first cross training that's out here for many, many years on uh, on our public work, including on a backhoe and everything else. So I thought that was absolutely needed. I've been mentioned that for a long time. And uh, you mentioned the removal of the light of the big channel that, that also. Uh, was kind of held the public work around that uh, in the uh, because that's been talked about many times and it costs a lot of money if we work with that on a lot of money but it was done it was done right and the rest you gotta let me work that but we work there will be some keep the grass short and the main so whatever <laughs> thank you thank you <clears throat> Uh, public safety, who's going to I don't have any. Thanks, Bruce. Um, Mayor, Betty Cole. On June 5th, I officiated a wedding at the First United Methodist Church. On the 12th, attended the memorial block for Emma Shaw, which was well attended. And at some point, the family hopes to uh, present a lending library and a memorial plaque in memory of this child who passed away from mitochondrial disease and the walk on Saturday was to help raise funds for this disease. She was 11 years old when she passed away last year in February. And on the 13th, I presented a proclamation to Richard Dillon Chapel, uh, Eagle Scout Troop 2. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, Police Chief Chad King is absent. Uh, Slicer, Tom <coughs> Thank you. I don't have anything to do that. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Royal Engineer, Dave Cope. Uh, we submit a report, Jim, that would have to address any questions. <coughs> any questions for the engineer? Yes. yes. Is there a proposed start date for the Janeway project? Uh, we're still working through some utility conflicts with the water company. Any more questions? Okay, Fire Chief Ray Costain. Thank you, Council President. Uh, month of May, uh, Fire Department responded to 30 calls for service. Um, the only other thing to report, uh, we are going to continue the food truck Thursday from four to eight, uh, that's definitely going to go through the month of September, uh, maybe into October as well. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Southbridge EMS Daniel. I'll have a report. Right. Uh, Bridgeville Historical Society, very nice. Do you have any there? Our program on June 22nd will be the Life and Times of Andrew Jackson, presented by Jack Fabrizi 
7.30 at the shelter. No programs during July and August. Thank you. Uh, Ritual Library representative. Uh, thank you, guys. Yeah, submitted the written report. Um, just to reiterate, we did start summer reading and summer programming today with a combination of virtual and in-person stuff. So um, we hope you come visit us. And we did just recently restore Saturday service hours, so we're open six days a week now, almost back to free food service. So thank you for your continued support. I think it was great that the uh, the school was involved in giving you that storage. Today. Yeah, yeah. We just added it. We saw in the report. We had a brand new shed. It's gorgeous. So. You can drive by and take a look. They what are you going to be keeping in there? Um, it's for the Friends of the Library. They're going to store all of their used books in there to accommodate their used book sales. I could use some money with that. I mean, my. Man, what are the COVID restrictions at the library? We're pretty, the only thing we still have in place, um, I mean, we haven't cut these up at the counters, but we are still requiring a mask to come in, but otherwise, we're pretty much back to three. And then once the mask ending lifts, we'll probably lift it as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Regional Parking Authority representative, I do not see anyone here. Do we have any comments? I have a couple of comments. Um, they have been giving us a report over the last few months. And uh, it, it's good to know what's going on a little bit with the Parking Authority. However, uh, I was a little disturbed with the reports for this past month. Uh, one of the things that we found in there list uh, each month is the parking authority continues to remain a, as a self-sustaining entity um, which is great to hear uh, but I have some concerns as far as meeting minutes that we got from the April meeting that I guess were already voted on because I was told that there's signs already put up that they're changing their hours that they're going to be charging people for parking from what was it eight to six Nine to six. Nine to six. And now they're moving them from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, I'm curious, number one, if our restaurants know about that. Um, and I'm also really concerned that we're always talking about bringing people in. Uh, we didn't even have a public discussion on this, or did anybody know other than getting this report? Is anybody aware of, of, of this? Uh, and the second part is they're promoting their whole system with the, the app. We're using their, uh, their parking meters. Uh, using the app, we're using credit card payments now instead of it being the dollar and then charging on the app, I think, a minor fee, which I understand that because that, that pays for the service. But now the minimum is $2.50 instead of a dollar. Um, really struggling with that. I understand maybe the concept is um, people don't normally uh, stay there more than an hour. It's more than an hour, so why don't they just pay the two fifty up front? Uh, I'm really struggling with that because what happens if somebody needs to go to Bridgeville Appliance for fifteen minutes, two dollars and fifty cents? Um, I'd like to hear some comments in regards to this from the party before you maybe invite them to the meeting and explain. The, the reasoning behind this, so the public knows. Um, I'm actually, and I invite everybody else, uh, I think we should go and listen at the Parking Authority meeting on, on their reasoning by this uh, before we start getting yelled at about it. When we, again, um, the Parking Authority is a self sustaining entity. Um, that seems a little drastic to me, 150% on the electronic payments when everybody pays by app. Or by credit card now. Um, so I just I needed to make that comment. Uh, anybody else welcome, Nick? You were talking about it as well. You're welcome to. But uh, yeah, uh, I really think that we need to have a major conversation with the parking authority, at least to be able to say when the residents come and start yelling at us that the parking is too much, especially the businesses. We have to have some responses on why they're doing. I have a comment. We. We have invited them to attend this meeting every month. And for the last several months, we've been asked to submit any questions that we have to them prior to it. Now, this would have been an important issue to bring up and, and discuss openly. Um, because we are the ones who will face 
the music that showed up here. And, uh, so I agree with Joe. I think we, we definitely need to get face-to-face uh, -face with the, the authority and have some discussion about the impacts that this may have on you know, our community. I believe that I, I think Joe's absolutely correct um, on this comment. And we're going to hear some, some big, big problems from the restaurant and from Bridgeville. Uh, a month ago, I talked to uh, the chairman uh, <laughs> of the park and authority. I said, I tell you what, that's not right to what you are thinking to do. But we came to that idea and try something else. Uh, I think we, of course, I'm not going to. Everybody knows that, but we have an attorney over here, which he knows the, the regulation between council and parking authority. <clears throat> we should look into that. I know we are responsible for all these things in some way, somewhat. I, I could be wrong. We have the legal department over here, so he can correct me. There's something going to be done. Uh, if it's a management problem, a uh, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, the payroll inside, it's over $140,000 a year. I mean, I, I don't know. It's somebody, you heard that quotation, somebody's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> On the timing of it seems really inconsiderate as well. You know, we're just coming out of a pandemic, not quite there yet. And now we have a threat of a toll bridge on 79 that's going to cost people another one to two dollars to even come to the community. So I think they should cover this sign. I think they should, yeah. I, I think my concern is stress stressed to all viewers as well. Um, I know businesses are feeling it enough as it is. Right. Uh, the restaurant industry specifically, most of these businesses right now are not open Mondays. They're not opening until three or four o'clock. So now you're telling, telling these businesses that you're going to force an increase in parking that they have to use from the parking authority in their peak hours. I'm sorry, that's um, there needs to be some sort of public forum where the businesses and the community needs to be able to stress their thoughts and opinions as opposed to just what theirs are for keeping their business right. Do we know when their next meeting is June? Um, next Monday. Next Monday. It's, it's a public it's, it's going to be in public. Yeah. Will we allow it? Because sure. I really have been close to public meetings. So, I don't see how. Which public meeting? Is it a public meeting? Or something? Well, yeah, yeah, we did. Though. I can remember how we did during COVID. During COVID, were they meeting in public or I mean in private? Or were they televising their meetings? They, they met here and locked the doors. Yes. We did. Thank you. Uh, huh. They took action here somewhere uh, in this race. Oh, I can say in general answer to Ms. Alpetrocelli's question is, is that generally speaking, they are an authority, at, and as long as they exist, you have the power to appoint, etc. We said that, also subject to the sunshine. And in order to take lawful action, although they don't have to do resolutions, authorities act with them. Or ordinances, they do resolutions, potato, potato, but they have to be done in public. And it was a Sunshine Act compliant meeting. And I wasn't referring to them not doing it. I just, I'm seeing the April minutes. And mm -hmm. Fortunately, I could not go to the meeting. And they're coming. Yeah, yeah. And concerning the parking authority, <clears throat> uh, my, uh, colleague told me a couple of weeks ago that in regards to that uh, yeah, vacant property on the corner of horses and Avenue and James Street that the doctor purchased that uh, I guess they've been unable to negotiate a fair selling price with him so they're going to take action and uh, force him to sell the property to the authority. That, that's what he told me a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's changed and now. Yeah, financially, I don't know if you can it. That's the question I sort of have. I mean, what they're doing, I, I don't agree with either, but this reading the April 7th, I don't think they've been losing money in the last several months. 
I don't know how well, bad off they are, or are they in trouble, or what's going on with like that. I mean, there's another way to do it, I mean, as far as just dropping it on people's heads. I think, I guess we'd have to go to a meeting to find out. I think so. yeah. We could call a meeting with them as well. We'll go to their meeting. Okay, let's move on from that. No, thank you, and yeah, appreciate your comments, Mr. Bridgeville Planning Commission representative. Um, basically, our ordinance we really have uh, to report is um, we submitted uh, our questions for the comprehensive plan for the preliminary, um, uh, the pre interview, I guess you want to call it. And then we also decide that we're, we're going to meet in person as well. <coughs> same thing, quasi Zoom and public. Yeah, yep. same thing. Back here. That's it. Is that like the main thing, right? Pretty much. Yeah, okay. Just check. Okay. Uh, Borough Manager, Joe Powell. I've done the report unless anyone has any questions on my written reports. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Uh, under new business, we have a discussion on the Billing Street. Temporary experimental fire lane regulations. Um, we, we authorized that previously under resolution number 2021 13, and I think we need to consider action uh, saving whether we're going to move forward with uh, adopting that ordinance and advertising. Uh, so I did talk to the chief this morning, and he told me that he has not written one ticket that people are in compliance, that they're not parking there. So that it's served its purpose. Um, and you know, me personally, I believe that it's something we should move forward with to make sure that that space, is, those spots remain open for the fire truck. But I'll entertain a motion if, uh, if you all agree. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Anything else on the new business? I have one. So the Bridgeville South Band Rotary is having their first annual trivia night this Saturday. Uh, plenty of people have seen, I'm sure, the social media and heard this uh, guy here uh, talking about it almost every meeting. Um, but we have two or three more tables left. It's down at the Bridgeville Fire Hall. Uh, lots of fun is going to be had, especially uh, with a lot of good Tough questions, but a lot of easy questions too. Mike Tolmer might even be able to get one right. I need, to, I need to get a team. I, I don't. I think a team. I will figure it out. But yeah, I mean, we actually even have a team of uh, three or four, so we can add a few people to that team. So uh, love to see more people come out. It's uh, for the Rotary. A lot of great causes. We have a lot of different things that we're uh, uh, putting towards uh, uh, the, the money that we raise. Uh, an example is is something that's hopefully coming in the in the future is a walking uh, park uh, book story. What's it called? The story walk. Thank you. Yeah. A story walk. We're hoping with that, uh, which is going to be a great. We're we're going to do some some help with them and the Boy Scouts and the friends of the library, but also maybe uh, trying to help financially as well for the project. So a lot of good things uh, going on at the Rotary and uh, this Thursday, if anybody's interested. Uh, the Chamber is actually visiting the Rotary meeting to get to know what the Rotary does. So anybody that would like to come, uh, I think the Chamber's last day of reserving a spot is tomorrow. So if anybody's interested, feel free. Uh, but it's going to be held at the Walnut Grill in their, their uh, room in the back. All right, I'm done talking, sorry. Who's the MC? Who's the MC? Guy who really knows his stuff. And the, only, the only reason why he's volunteered to be the MC is so he doesn't look bad and not know one question. <laughs> <laughs> one yeah. question. So. Anything else on our new business? Okay, well, we we and motion to adjourn. One second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?